Hey nursing students, I know that preparing for the NCLEX can be downright stressful, especially with all those new scary NGN style questions. But don't worry, today I'm going to break down each question style type so that you know exactly how to best tackle them during your NCLEX exam. With each NGN style, we will also work on an example together to test your knowledge and to get comfortable with the new process. You see, the new generation NCLEX, or simply the NGN, has six different styles of question. These include drag and drop, drop down, multiple choice, multiple response, highlight, and even bow tie style questions. And each style of questions has additional subcategories. Now I know it can be very scary, so let's break down each one. The fourth type of NCLEX style are the multiple response questions. Now again, there are four different subtypes, so let's take a look and try an example. First, we have our famous select all that apply, our SATA questions, which remember, SATA is only one letter away from Satan. Now keep in mind, these are very difficult questions and can be anywhere between five to 10 options. That's right, you heard it correct, 10 options. And here's the kicker, all 10 could be correct. In this question, it's asking which intervention should the nurse include in the client's nursing plan of care. Select all that apply, our favorite question. The problem here is developing a cure plan for ADHD. So for the solution, before looking at the options, think about safety here. So number one, increase risk for injury. So we have to monitor closely and minimize hazards. Number two is offer distractions for aggressive behavior. For example, blowing up a balloon. And the last one here is given written schedule for daily activities. Now let's look at the options here. So option one is correct. Encourage the parents to set clear, consistent limits with the child. Clear, consistent limits provide structure and helps the child understand expectations. The next option is also correct. Recommend the implementation of an instructional educational plan. This helps to meet individual needs related to learning and education. Also, option three is correct. Establish consequences for inappropriate behavior. It helps the child recognize actions will relate to consequences. And in option four, also correct, monitor height and weight closely. Because remember, medications for ADHD can suppress appetite and the child is already not gaining weight. Option five is also correct, so we're on a roll here. Suggest parents gain their child's attention and verbally explain the daily schedule. This helps the child comprehend expectations for specific short periods of time. Now, the only one wrong here is the last option, and let me explain why. Provide information to parents regarding the child's need for a lifetime pharmacotherapy. No, not all children with ADHD require lifelong pharmacotherapy, or basically lifelong drugs. Next, we have the matrix multiple response item type. In these questions, there can be anywhere between two to 10 columns and four to seven rows. Each column must have at least one answer selected, but could have multiple correct responses. So let's go through an example together. All right, another complicated question. Let's make it simple here. For each nursing intervention below, click to specify if the intervention is appropriate for clients with peripheral venous disease, peripheral arterial disease, or varicose veins. Now, each intervention may support more than one disease. So the problem here is interventions for vascular diseases. Now for the solution. Before looking at the options, what do you know about vascular disease? Well, number one, we have to promote circulation. So think P-A-D, let the name help you. You have to hang the leg to provide circulation. And for P-V-D, you simply use the V to elevate the leg. Also consider smoking cessation, or basically stop smoking, and weight reduction. Okay, now finally, let's dive into the options. Starting with P-V-D, that peripheral venous disease. Are we going to place the leg in a dependent position to relieve pain? No, because remember, P-V-D, you have to elevate the leg. What about promoting weight reduction? Well, of course, that's always a good choice on the NCLEX. But in this case, it reduces strain on the cardiovascular system and improves blood flow. What about elevating the leg four to five times a day? Yes, let the name help you, elevating the leg with PVD. How about applying anti-embolism stockings as prescribed? Yes, of course, this actually helps prevent clots in deep veins. How about the last one here? Encourage tobacco cessation. So basically, stop smoking. Yes, this is always a good choice on the NCLEX. Tobacco impairs the vessels by constricting and impairs or slows blood flow. Now let's move on to PAD, peripheral arterial disease. Are we going to place the leg in a dependent position to relieve pain? 
Yes, of course. Because let the name help you. P A D, we hang the leg, basically dangle the leg. This actually promotes circulation down to the toes. What about the next one? Promote weight reduction. Of course, this is always a good choice on the NCLEX to reduce weight. How about elevating the legs four to five times throughout the day? No, that is only for PVD or venous issues. What about applying anti air embolism stockings as prescribed? No, we don't want to do that because we have an arterial problem. And what about the last one? Tobacco. Yes, stop tobacco. So these ones should always be correct. Remember, weight and tobacco reduction is always encouraged on the ankle. Now, lastly is varicose veins. Are we going to place the legs in dependent position to relieve pain? No, let the name help you. The key term is veins. So remember, veins, you elevate the legs. And there it is again, promoting weight reduction, of course. How about elevating the legs? four to five times a day. Yes, let the name help you. It's a venous condition, so we elevate. What about applying anti-embolism stockings as prescribed? Yes, of course. Extra squeeze helps to actually relieve the symptoms. And the very last one, stopping smoking, is always a good choice. This question is asking us to select three priority actions. The problem is the nurse manager notices the staff nurse appears impaired while on duty. So for the solution, before looking at the options, always think about safety first. So we have to think about removing the individual from providing care. And it's your duty to report suspicious activity. Okay, now let's dive into the options. Are we going to remove the nurse from the unit? Yes, of course. Remember, the priority is safety. So impaired nurses should not be giving care. The next three options are incorrect. And let me explain why. Terminate the nurse's employment. Although this was pretty close, further investigation is needed before employment can be terminated. What about notifying the State Board of Nursing? Well, this would not be implemented until a full investigation has been completed. How about shadowing the nurse in the provision of the client's care? Well, we should not allow the nurse to continue providing care, so we can't really shadow them if they go home. Now, the last two options are correct, and let's break them down. So informing the nurse that a drug screening is required. So remember, drug screening is mandatory because impairment is suspected. And the very last option, evaluate the need for the nurse's emergency treatment. This ensures physical safety of the impaired nurse. This question is asking for each discharge topic below, click to specify the appropriate teaching to be given. And each topic may support more than one teaching point. So the problem here is that discharge teaching after a TERP due to that benign prosthetic hyperplasia, that BPH. So for the solution, before looking at the options, think about the important teaching for a TERP. Now, if you didn't know, a TERP is a surgical procedure and it sends a big metal tube down the urethra to basically grind up the prostate and suck it out. So obviously the client is gonna have bloody urine for the first 24 hours, as well as small clots up to 36 hours after but we have to report for signs and symptoms of infection and always avoid constipation and straining and no intercourse for about six weeks since the client had major surgery down in the pelvic area. All right, now let's dive into the options here. So first is complication prevention. What are we gonna include in the teaching points? So would it be eating fruits and vegetables daily? Well, yes, this actually helps remote GI motility and decreases constipation risk. So this would decrease pelvic pressure. What about drinking four glasses of water per day? No, that's far too low. We need to up those numbers, kid. So eight glasses or more of water per day. How about stool softeners as directed? Yes, this helps to prevent straining after surgery. Now moving on to activity. Number one is lawn mowing allowed two days after discharge. No, we want the client to not strain at all. So we have to avoid any physical activity for a few weeks after surgery. What about the next one? Avoiding activity that causes strain on the bladder until cleared by the HCP. Yes, this is the safest thing to do. How about no sexual activity for about four to six weeks? Yes, avoiding sexual intercourse for several weeks ensures healing. Now moving on to urination. Are we gonna advise the client to use the bathroom at the first urge to avoid? Well, yes, this actually decreases the risk for infection and chance of incontinence. How about notify the surgeon if there's blood in the urine one week after the procedure? Yes, of course. Urine should begin to get clear within about 24 hours after surgery. So we expect bloody urine 
up to that 24 hour mark after surgery. Now the last option is correct. And let me explain why. This one was a little bit tricky, but monitoring for discomfort with urination for up to one month after the procedure, this could be indicative of a potential infection. So we should report this to the HCP. Thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. All right, guys, see you next time.